Let's go for a drive. So coolant temperature right now, about 170. It's been running for, I think about 45 minutes. I think the pilot bearings out of this truck. That sounds real good. Clutch brake is completely inoperable. Up. That's how fast the temperature goes up. Okay, we're in the danger zone now. We're gonna back off. Come on, baby, come back down. We haven't even driven a mile. I didn't speed that up at all. That's how fast the temperature changes in real time. You ever seen anything like that? And we're back to normal. <laughs> oh, that is diabolical. All right, let's get this pig back to the shop. We got a big problem. This thing should never get hot. There's so much cooling capacity. I mean, we're just bobtailing around. It's cold outside. There's no way it should be doing what it's doing. This is an old R model Mac. 1977, I think. It's got a Mac engine, Mac transmission, Mac axles, and Mac Camelback suspension. It's a super cool truck. Really looks sharp. But it is a pain to work on because it's a Mac, it's pushing 50 years old, and it's been pieced together from several different trucks. I know for sure it has two different VIN number tags and no engine serial number tag. The frame is aluminum, which guys tell me was only available on the West Coast, and apparently this air filter box was only available in Canada. So that gives you a little bit of an idea what we're dealing with. The problem is it's overheating, and it's been doing it for a long time couple of years we've been trying to track down this problem. It's very strange. It gets hot really fast, then it gets cold really fast, and it's also intermittent. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't, but it's getting worse. So I think this time we can finally pin it down. A couple years ago they ran into the back of a combine. You can still see the green paint there. And it shoved the hood back into the radiator, shoved the radiator back into the fan and poked a hole in it. I replaced the radiator but I'm pretty sure this overheating issue predates that incident. Because if I remember right, when I did the radiator, he asked me to also replace the thermostat and the coolant temperature gauge. I think because he was having this same issue. And that did not solve the problem. The fan is direct drive, it runs all the time. The radiator is new, the caps are new, the coolant is new, the thermostat is new, and the coolant temperature gauge is new. So it's possible we have a bad water pump or some kind of a restriction, possibly in the oil cooler, or I don't know if this intercooler also uses coolant. I believe it does. That's possible, but I think it's more likely that we have a bad head gasket or a cracked block or a cracked head or all three. That is a plastic zip tie wrapped around the exhaust. I wonder how long that's been there. Anyway, how do you know if the head gasket is bad? Uh, the short answer is sometimes it's very difficult to say. Uh, sometimes it's easy. You know, you pull an injector or a spark plug, pressure test it, if you got coolant on top of the piston, 
or you know you got bubbles coming out of the radiator or it's leaking externally you know it's pretty much x marks the spot but other times it's not so easy it's easy to test and say that it's probably bad or it's probably good but it's very difficult to say with 100 percent certainty and I don't know if you've ever done a head gasket before, but it's not like changing the tire. You kind of want to know before you go to all that work. The best way is to use an electronic gas analyzer, five gas analyzer or whatever they call it. But very few shops have those. In fact, I can't think of a single one around here that has that. They used to be used a lot for emissions testing, but nobody does that anymore. So the second best way to do that is to use a chemical gas analyzer. So this is a kit sold by Lyle. It has a chemical here that you put into this vial, stick it over the radiator cap, and if there are combustion gases inside the radiator, it should change the fluid from blue to yellow. The kit comes with this fluid, which is for gasoline engines, and then this stuff here is for diesel engines. I had to buy this separately. So it should change from red to yellow if the head gasket is bad. We're going to fill it up to the line like so and then we have to pull a vacuum through this vial. This is a diesel engine so it doesn't have its own vacuum. We can't just hook it up to a vacuum line. So we're going to hook this hose up and then we can use a handheld vacuum pump like so. I'm going to fire it up. It's got to warm up for a few minutes and then we'll do the test. Well, that's fun. We have a problem. Well, we have a couple of problems, but the big problem is this fluid did not change colors at all. Even though there was a constant stream of gas or air or whatever blowing right through it. So there's two possibilities. Either whatever's pressurizing the cooling system is not combustion gas, or more likely this test is just complete crap. So I believe it's testing for CO2 or high concentrations of CO2. You're supposed to be able to do a reality check by just breathing near the inlet of the, the vial and sucking it through with the vacuum pump. So let's see what happens here. We made it to orange. Guess I don't have enough hot air. Anyway, the fluid seems to be working but it did not detect CO2 in the gases from the radiator. <sighs> oh man, I broke it. It's not even really melted. Anyway, there is one way I can think of to get non-combustion gases into the cooling system. It's not through the intake, even though it has a turbo, because there's just no pressure at, at idle. And even at full boost, it's probably not that much pressure. Five PSI or something. I doubt that could do it, but the air compressor could. It is cooled by the engine cooling system and it makes, what, 130 PSI or whatever. Now it should be unloaded when the truck does not need air. So the pistons run all the time, but they don't make pressure. They're unloaded. It just cycles the air from one piston to the other. But just to be sure, 
and we can take the, the outlet line loose and uh, there should be a check valve so we shouldn't hurt anything by doing that and then that would essentially eliminate any pressure that comes from the air compressor. Let me get the right wrench. Oh. Making me a liar. There is air there. I don't think there should be. There should be a check valve. Yeah, there's a check valve on the inlet to the air dryer, I'm sure of it. Pretty sure I put an air dryer on this truck not too long ago. Sounds like it's about done. Okay. All right, we'll try it again. There shouldn't be any way for the compressor to build pressure now. sound. I think it's just an air leak. It can't be the main air pressure going into the cooling system because it would be pressurized all the time, not just when it's running. Unless I'm missing something, it's got to have a bad head gasket or a cracked block or a cracked head or some combination of the three. Here's my theory on the, the temperature gauge and the crazy fluctuations. The sender is right here. It's basically at the top of the engine. It's actually a little bit higher than the, the block itself. And when the cooling system is being pressurized, the gas is going to form a bubble. And I'll bet you, when the temperature goes way up, it's actually reading the temperature of that hot gas and not the coolant itself. And then once it pushes that big bubble through the thermostat and into the radiator, the temperature comes right back down. Sounds plausible to me anyway. Yeah, that sucks. Head gasket on this truck would be a major, major job. I don't know if it's something I would even want to do. Well, this sucks. It really does. We can't trust our test equipment, and that's a bad situation, especially when it seems to be calibrated correctly. You know, the whole point of testing is confirmation and we can't confirm anything with this. The other problem too is, you know, now I'm questioning all the past diags I've done with this tool. I, I've used it on dozens of suspected bad head gaskets. And I actually can't think of a single time that the fluid changed colors. So I guess it's better to have a false negative than a false positive. At least we weren't tearing a bunch of heads off replacing gaskets that weren't bad, but still it sucks. I don't know, like I said, head gaskets are, are tricky and it's really tough to make the call. It's even worse on newer vehicles, especially diesels that have EGR coolers because now you've got another place where combustion gases and coolant are mixing. There is another test we can do. It's not very helpful on this truck, but you can use a pressure transducer on an oscilloscope and you should see pulses in the, in the pressure coming out of the, the radiator tank. And actually, if you have, you know, a gas engine where you can, or even a modern diesel engine with electronic injectors where you can sync to the injection event, you can actually figure out what cylinder the head gasket is leaking on. But not much help for this truck because it's all mechanical, so we can't, we can't sync anything. Anyway, I'm making the call. It's got a bad head gasket. Yeah, thanks for watching.